But here we're going to be looking at a concept of uh, work on grace. Hard work on grace. Hard work is good. Grace is good. But analyzing the best option, which one is the best? Is it hard work? Is it by grace? Which one is the best? Hard work can be divine. And something requiring a lot of effort to do. Something requiring a lot of effort. Human effort, physically, mentally, emotionally, or to toiling. When you toil, okay, the word toil in the Bible is because of man's sin. God created man in the garden of Eden. And the man was there to supervise and to maintain it. But because he's sinning with his wife, God says, instead of maintaining and supervising, they now begin to toil and labor before they can eat. So, if you look at the origin of the word labor and toiling or hard work, that only come from sin. But have the second one, which is the grace. Grace simply means we are dividing the kingdom of the, the meaning of our world. That we divide in grace. Grace is the basis of unmerited, unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. Grace can also be divine. Grace of God is the expression of His goodness towards us. Who does not deserve it? Grace can also be divine, achieving something through selfless effort. I'll put it like that. Grace can be, I mean, or can be divine as achieving a particular, a particular thing through selfless effort or through laziness. And work is meant for those who love God's help. God divine intervention. You see, when grace is only a man, you cannot equal yourself with such a person. A man of grace might not to be to be finished for him, but tomorrow you see him in another different form. By grace, Joseph was sold. Okay, Joseph was was pushed into the into the pit. Grace brought him out. He was sold out to what fire. And then Grace was still with him. Right inside the prison, Grace was with him. A man of grace can never be destroyed. Because grace simply means God, which is Jesus. A man who walks out is a man who arrogates success to himself. Who says, by my own hand, by my own hand, I achieve this, I achieve that, I achieve all of this by my own hand. A man who worked hard, okay, in the Bible there is no need, there is no work in working hard. Okay? What the Bible talks about working hard is being diligent. Can you read the place for me? Sell down a man. He says, sell down a man. Diligent in his business. Diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall stand before what? Kings. Did they mention hard work there? No, sir. He said, Can you read it again? Who has a dictionary in your phone? Can you read it for me? Diligence. Yes. Preservance. Determination of what? Determination of preservance. Yes. When doing something. Yes. In another dictionary, it is, it is, it is saying, having, showing some care and contentiousness. Showing some care in doing something and be very conscious in doing it. 
There is no meaning of arm work. Then can you define arm work for us, missionary? Arm work. Arm something, arm work. Arm work simply means when you put on a lot of effort. Okay? There is no grace. You put on a lot of effort to achieve. Those who, who show up as having worked very hard, they are individuals that will go to hell. They don't believe in Jesus. That's why they walk hard. And most people that walk hard are always comfortable. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, it said, I am the Lord God that give you power to do what? I gave you power to make wealth, to make money, which is grace. I give you grace to make money. So, if you look at what we have just read, it is not by hard work that the man made it in line, but by the grace of God. That is why, no matter what you think you have achieved today, those things are only meant for you to achieve because God, which you have never served, allowed that to happen to your life. The Bible says, in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same in the beginning was with God. And all things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And in verse 14, it says, This world, this world took on flesh and fell among us. And you and I beheld the glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Full of grace and what? It means when you have Jesus, when you have Jesus this year in your life, you will not walk too much, you will not walk hard. To walk hard is means to labor. Proverbs, Proverbs 22, Proverbs chapter 10, 22, it says the blessing of God will do what? Will make you rich. And we have no hard work to it. Okay? That's why the Bible says the blessing of God make it rich. And then what? What is sorrow? Sorrow means we are toiling, we are laboring. And the thing is we are laboring for is not coming to pass. That is sorrow. One thing one sorrow every day, we don't have our strength to pay. We cannot pay our strength school fees. We cannot eat what we like. Our wife does not respect us because, because we don't have enough to give, to provide. Okay? Sorrow, all of this is sorrow. If you look at those who are really suffering in Christianity, or in the world, and those who lack the grace of God, on the grace of Satan. Satan has grace. God has grace. God can give you grace to make it to prosper. Satan can give you grace to prosper. Hope you know that. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. You don't know that. Satan can give you money. God can give you money. Satan can give you money. Satan can give you peace. Satan can give you peace. And God Himself give you peace. But how do we know the difference behind it? How do we know the difference between God's money and Satan's money? God's peace and Satan's peace is the difference, is the end that we know. The end of it. That will make us to know. Can you go to John chapter 14, 27? Peace I live with you. He said, My peace I live with you. My yes. Peace, my peace I give I unto you. He said, My peace I give unto you. Not as the word given. Who is the word? Satan. Eh? Satan. You can see what I'm saying. You know why some of us are poor? We lack grace. We take the option of and war. And war. Is a cause. But grace is meant for those who are not working hard, but they are making it. 
Are you ready to agree? Say, so, peace, I give, I live with you. He so, said, peace, I live with you. My peace, I give unto you. He so, said, my peace, I give unto you. Not as the world give it. Not as Satan give you. Give I unto you. And I give unto you. Listen to me. This year is not a year of hard war. It's a year of partnership. That's where I'm going to. If you decide to work hard this year, you only be toiling and be laboring. But if you decide to partner with Jesus by giving your life to Him and living according to His will, because Jesus is the grace, He is the truth. There is no way you will not survive. There is no way you will not make it. But if you decide to opt, to opt for and more, and more, okay, which is not in the Bible. There is nothing like and more in the Bible. The only way we have and more is diligent, which is showing care and being conscious about what you are doing. And the lady has done right for us. For those who are already working hard, there are those who are toiling. The issue of hard work comes originated from Abraham, from Adam and Eve, our forefathers, who sin, who left grace and begin to toil before they can eat. The same thing is happening to us today. If we leave Jesus alone, you think you can make it by yourself, you only be working hard and be toiling, okay? But at the end of it all, you will only be catching the hair. But if we analyze between these two phrases, and more and grace, for us to choose grace, we must decide to live for God. We must decide to be born again. We must decide to leave everything behind and put our hope and our trust and faith in everything about Jesus Christ. Okay? Because, except of course, God Himself help us. There is nothing we can do to help ourselves. The end of man is what? Is vain. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. Let's go to the place. He will keep the feet of his self. Yes. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For my strength, for my strength shall no man prevail. He says, for my what? By hard war. What is strength? What is strength? Strength is hard war. He said, by strength shall no man prevail. No matter the kind of prayer you pray that can heal a sick person, if the grace to heal is not in you, that's what I'm saying. Okay? All pastors pray. But the difference between pastor is the grace is coming. If the grace is in you, there is no way you pray, that thing will not happen. So, you can only be delicate in doing it, being careful in doing it, being delicate in doing it, and being conscious in doing it, so that you can prosper. But for us to apply hard work this year, forget it, what happened last year to you, no more of it will happen this year. Matthew 11 from verse 28. What did he say? Come unto me. Come unto me. You that you are laboring and are heavy laden. And you are toiling. Heavy laden means toiling. And I will give you rest. And I will give you what? Rest. When I was in the University of Ibadan, I always did the work of God because I was a pastor and a I don't have much time to read. Okay? But I see me. I was diligent in my reading, my study. But when examination is about to come, I will go to God at night and say, God, you know, if you leave me in the hand of this nature, they will slaughter me. You know, 
If you want me to compete with this my student who are living in the town, 24 hours, look at my room in the, in the school. I don't have time to be there all the time because of you. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, save me. Help me to pass Cezanne so that the shame will not be to you. Because if I fail, they will say, hey, look at the pastor and the dean. Who's comforting? Who's not breaking the ground? Okay? And I will, I will read. I will sleep. When I'm on the water, I will not deceive you. In the night in my dream, God will show me like three topics. Once God show me I'm on the water, I will not deceive you. One God show me, I will come wake up in the morning and mark those topics. Believe me, those topics are coming out. Out of eight questions, we have to answer five. I would have climbed the whole three topic and then studied the remaining ones. So when they give us examination to write, I look at I say, God can not lie, 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 God can in statistics. In my first level, I only tried to score 50. But as of the time I was a pastor, I was not having time to really study. I scored 76 over 100, which is A in statistics. In the rest of the Bible. You can see the difference between hard work and grace. When I was doing hard work and reading well, I scored 50. Not 50 something. But when I was on that place, I scored 76. That's why those who labor, those who toil, they are only laboring and toiling because they are sinners. Sinners, that's why you want to marry. One month before your marriage, three months before your marriage, I will say stop sex. Because if you keep on committing sin, and then you want to marry, money will not come for you. See, when we say, it is true that must, it is your own obligation that you must do it. It is not us. Because if you don't do that, you only live what to marry. But when you are straight from sin, grace will come and begin to help you. That's why anybody that wants to marry in this church, one of the things I will tell you is say, for the next three months, no sex. For the next one month, no sex. So that grace will take over your marriage plan. But when you are committing fornication, Satan takes over your marriage plan, and you are not serving Satan well, so you have problem. Start like that, let somebody go to Proverbs 23 verse 4. What is it saying? Proverbs 23 verse 4. Yes? Labor not to be rich. He said, Labor not to be rich. Cease from their own wisdom. Cease from their own wisdom. Cease from their own what? Wisdom. Then read that 28. Come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that are that are laboring and are heavy laden and toiling, and I will give you rest. And give you what? Rest. Rest is what? Grace. Huh? Grace. God bless you. Rest is grace. He said, Let us enter into this rest, so that we will not be like those people in the past. Rest is grace. When you are doing something effortless, effortlessness, or in a very simple manner, okay, and then, you know, when David was about to kill Goliath, he, he, he spread his, his uh, arrow. He said, Holy Spirit, hold on to me, hold on to my hand. Hold on to my hand. And the stone just went to the Replace between the end of the line. And that is how we die. That's what I taught my wife. Say, so when you are met with problem, say, Holy Spirit, help me out. Holy Spirit, help me out. When you are driving, Holy Spirit, use my hand to drive. When you are playing football, you want to score. 
always me use my leg to stop. But when you think by your own effort, you can achieve anything under this sun. Okay? You are giving the glory to yourself and not to God. God himself and Satan will fight you until you are poor and destroyed. No man can take glory on this earth. Either you give the glory to Satan or you give it to God. If you think you can be by yourself and take the glory, very soon you will be toiling and be laboring. Yes, for you to leave the place. Say, come and give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you. Take my what? My yoke. My own yoke. Yeah. Upon what? Upon you. Upon you. And learn of me. And learn of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart. He said, I'm, I'm meek and lonely in heart. For I am meek and lonely in heart. Yes. And yet shall find rest unto your soul. Yes. For my yoke is easy. He said, his own yoke. That means there are other yoke. I told you that you type of yoke. Let me tell you before you leave this course. When you serve God for 10 years, you are still in one room, you are not serving God. When you serve Satan for 10 years, you are still living in one room, you are not serving Satan. That is why we have four, four people. Are you going to just wait, you will read it. Are you going to the book of John chapter 12, verse 8? For the poor always. Let me tell you. The Yahweh you are doing cannot prosper if the hand of Satan is not there. Or let me say it to you. If the hand of Satan is not there, or even the hand of God, If you don't tell your prophet who has grace and anointing like a woman and is praying for you, your Yahoo will walk out. Because it does not know. You will be selling. Because there is something that is that is that is working for you. Because God does not answer our prayer because we are faith. God answers because of Jesus. You don't know? Yes, you will know, right? Yes, God does not answer our prayer because we are righteous. God answers our prayer because of Because of Jesus. The Yahoo boy is being blessed because of his prophet. Or because he has placed his hand on his leg on top of a tortoise or put his two legs inside pocket and he's talking to you. The knowledge of Satan and of God or of God is marked through your human knowledge. That's why you release your money to them. After you release your money, you say, ah, what have I done? Because you talk to them once. No man of wisdom can stand the wisdom of God or that of Satan himself. Yes, the book of John chapter 12, verse 8. Say for the poor always ye have with you. He said you will always you will always have poor people. Okay. Huh? Among you. Who says so? He said. You will always have poor people among you. Yeah. You will always have poor people among you. Did Jesus want you to be poor? No, no, no. no. Jesus wanted all of us to be rich. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. The grace of our Lord Jesus. That though he was rich. That though Jesus was rich. Yet for your sake he became poor. Because of us, he became poor. So that we, through his poverty, not will be rich. Don't say we. We are still quoting John chapter 12, verse 8. Please read it well. There is a command here. So that through his poverty, 
you may be much means you may you may be rich. That may be rich means even though through my poverty you can you there is a there is ability for you in disability for you to be rich, but it's probability. It's probability. That's why I say it might, not certainty. There's what they call certainty of promise. If he says, oh, through my poverty, you must be rich. Nobody now will know they can hear. So don't listen to all those old men, old prophets. I am the last prophet with few others. After me, rapture comes. The word might means may. And he said again, he said, there will always be poor people. Eh? Why are they poor? Why are they poor? Because they lack what? Grace. God bless you, sir. Because they lack grace. So the question is that, before you leave here today, don't you know the sound that will bring upon his grace? If God sends you to where you're supposed to be, it's grace. If God allows you to be at the right place, it's grace. Not everybody will be where they're supposed to be. And the poverty of a man is to be in a state where he's supposed to be in Cameroon. You'll be poor here. No matter you know you're working hard and be laboring and be toiling, but you can never make it because we are in the wrong place. So it's even a grace that you know how to pray this prayer. Oh Lord, I have suffered enough. Take me to the right place. You stand on the head. Say, take me to the right place where I'm supposed to be. It's a grace. Look, once you get to the place, look at all your sons in America and London. They find us a day. I see you stand to pray for one of them. It's yesterday morning. I see you stand to pray. The one that you stand to pray for, after seven years of stay and suffering in, in, in that place, just get automatic job. Because grace is a secret which others do not know or have. And you have it, and you use it, and you work for it. Grace is a secret. Somebody that set up bless can be studying for Kamek. And they will be very deeper. But you that you are working in first bank or second bank or meeting and pretty, you can see me leaving your room and find yourself continue to die. Because you are just meeting and pretty. If you want to go out, they will naked you and search you. All that you meet and print will not follow you. Can you that place again? That 29. Go to Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of faith. Even pastors in Africa, they have that of yoke that is following them, either of Christ or for local. Because you cannot be a pastor without manifesting power. You cannot sustain. If you say you are a pastor, or you are a husband, for your wife to really love you and respect you, or your children to obey you, you must have you must manifest some things, either power or connection or influence. Your husband is not husband because you have a brick. Your husband is husband on the basis of what you can give, you can offer. If you are a pastor, you are just preaching the word of God, and there is nothing more you can offer beyond the word of God you are preaching. You are just deceiving yourself. There is no difference between you and you, the very natural. You, the very natural, can preach and teach and still have sex with other women and, and his students. And nothing can offer them than what they are teaching. That's why we have engineers out there, you have BS in engineering. You still are working back. Because there is nothing you have. That I want to talk to you in the lesson. So, the grace of God 
is what every humanity needs to prosper. That's why I call it yoke here. Yeah, yoke. Yes? Are you continuing? Say, take my yoke upon you. Take my own yoke upon you. And learn of me. And learn of me. For I am big and lonely in heart. He said, I am lonely in heart. And you shall find rest unto your soul. You shall, you shall find grace. Take my own yoke. He said, his yoke is what? His own yoke is what? It's light. 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 I'm not saying you should not have a fancy, but don't have, don't have sex without your fancy until you pay, until you remove the light, the light you want, which is not endowed. Go and well, pay down. And then you, you are truly prepared to do it. You are truly prepared to do it. And then you will make it. That's what it's not saying. They say his own yoke is light. His Jesus yoke is very light. And then when you can do it, he said he will give you rest. Rest is grace. Those who have rest, they are the ones who are laboring by the power of God Himself. They are not laboring by, by toiling, by their own effort. But they are achieving what they achieve, even though they are lazy, but they achieve what they achieve. Because of what? Because of the grace of God. He said the elders can serve what? The younger. The younger. You say all pastors are the same. All pastors are the same. It means you are foolish. When you say all pastors are the same, or you say all men are the same. So women will say, all men are the same. All men are not the same. Because your husband is fornicating around and committing adultery around does not make all men the same. All men are not the same. Can you go to 4 Samuel chapter 10 verses? You know that all men are not the same. And the Spirit of the Lord. When the grace of God come upon you, and thou shalt prophesy. Thou shalt prophesy. With them. With them. Huh? Shall be turned into another man. On the line now, please. Is all men the same now? No. There is all men, there's another man. Yes. <laughs> Even with this grace, grace still has difference. Yes, sir. It still has measure. We have what they call measure of grace. All men of God does not have the same grace. Pastor, you cannot exercise or manifest the grace of a prophet. You are not deceiving yourself. If you are a pastor or a teacher, there is no way you can manifest or exercise the grace of an evangelist. It's not possible. Soldier is different from police, but they all carry guns. We need to submit to grace this year. For us to prosper, our work should not be our portion this year. Yeah. But diligently working for God. Yeah. 